When I was, I think, seven years old, um, my father read me the first book, and then I reread it and reread it and reread it and reread it. Uh, and I started listening to the audiobooks, and I just became obsessed. And, it, the, and so then I just I, I read all of those books hundreds of times and listened to those audiobooks many hundreds of times, particularly the Jim Dale. You know, was it was central to my life from for what for those ten years. I mean, from when I was seven to when I was seventeen, and then kind of with no pause, continuing quicksand because you get drawn into them and then cannot escape. Got it, yes. I find that to be true. I find that to be true. Only wants to talk about Harry Potter, even though you're supposed to be an adult. Yes, I identify with that. Yeah, sure, I mean, I think people who read the Harry Potter books and watched those films know that the relationship between, between Dumbledore and Grindelwald was a very complex one, a very intimate one, a close one. It was it was an, a relationship that that happened during adolescence, and I think we all can identify with um, how much uh, someone can come to mean to you at that time. Um, you know, someone who's your age who becomes the closest person to you, and the love that exists there, and what happened between them was sort of an ideological split wherein their philosophies were aligned and they were very excited about this sort of dangerous idealistic mentality um, that they shared and then at some point their paths and their beliefs started to diverge um, and we get to explore more about that uh, as this series progresses, because it's a very, it's a very important relationship for the history of the whole wizarding world, um, and it's a beautiful thing that it, it actually comes from this very uh, intimate um, root of two people who really, really connect when they're young, um, and and who really love each other and rely on each other, uh, and then who are broken apart, go different ways, and actually become both incredibly influential on different sides of the wizarding world. Yeah, I think, you know, the relationship between Credence and Graves, who we actually know now to have been Grindelwald throughout their whole relationship, um, is a complex one in which uh, they both, you know, need and want things from each other. Um, and Credence is really ultimately um, sort of being exploited. Uh, in, in Grindelwald's mind, he's just using Credence uh, as a means to get to the power he's seeking. He doesn't realize that Credence is actually the one uh, who holds that power. Um, but Graves, who is of course Grindelwald, actually uh, is really taking advantage of Credence's vulnerability, Credence's need for um, love and to be recognized and to be seen um, in the power of his differences from the rest of the people in his world and his life. Uh, you know, Credence really needs those things. Um, Grindelwald, who's devious and very cunning when it comes to um, reading and manipulating people, uh, he perceives all of this about Credence and he uses it. Um, it's not necessarily the type of friendship you want to be in. Uh, if you can get out of one like that, you, you, you probably should. Because um, it's not really based in, in mutual interest or benevolence. Uh, I can say that working with Claudia Kim was an absolute honor, an immense pleasure. Um, 
She's one of the greatest scene partners I've, I've ever been able to work with. Um, she's just incredibly talented, such a killer. Uh, and, and yeah, we had a lot of fun creating the relationship between uh, Credence and her character, who I can say literally nothing about. They do. They have. They have a wonderful. They have. They have a wonderful relationship. I think it's. Uh, I think Newt and Jacob are a great. Um, you know, Muggle wizard uh, friendship, which which we haven't known too many of in the series. Um, and I think they both learn a lot from each other. Uh, and I think they're both deeply delighted by each other, and I think they care for each other immensely. So that's that's a really good. Um, fruitful friendship, I think, for both of them, uh, and a delightful friendship for, for all of us as viewers who get to witness it on screen. Well, I think it's complicated because I think that, you know, Credence is, is troubled and confused as to who actually has his best interests at heart. So he's been so betrayed um, so many times in so many different ways uh, that I think he has a difficult time trusting anyone's intent. He doesn't really know Newt, you know? So he knows that Newt um, was acting like he just wanted to help him. Um, but then again, so was Grindelwald in the guise of, of Graves. You know, it, it, um, Graves was the same way in promising Credence uh, protection or safety or understanding uh, or care. And so I think Credence just has a hard time trusting anyone really. And that certainly applies to people in the magical world um, who have hurt him immensely, who tried to kill him. Um, he has no real reason to trust any wizard uh, and really has had a terrible run with no madges as well in his life and growing up and um, the type of, of uh, sort of puritanical and repressive culture that he was raised in. Um, which caused such dysphoria and you know, dystrophy sickness in him. Um, and having, you know, rebelled against that culture and, you know, his, his, his truth having exploded outwards and made him an outcast and an exile from that world, uh, he was also then met with hostility and animosity from the wizarding world. So he doesn't really, he doesn't really mess with anyone, you know. Um, I don't think, I don't think he knows if there is a difference between Graves, between Grindelwald and and Newt. Um, I think he sees them all as untrustworthy people who clearly want something from him, because um, otherwise, why would why would they be there? What what's what was their intent to begin with? Uh, so yeah. I think he just dis distrusts everyone. <laughs> uh,